Hi everyone and welcome back to Rainbow Crafts. Today we're going to make our soap called Diamonds and Rosé. The title is inspired by one of our favorite Real Housewives, Lisa Vanderpump, and this will actually be available for sale starting February 1st as part of our Valentine's collection. We will start out like we do every other soap by mixing in our light water solution into our plant-based oils. This plant-based oil blend and also the light water are both at about 110 degrees, give or take 20 degrees of each other. We will blend that up until it is a light trace. And then we will go in and strain in our colloidal oatmeal slurry. So we just want to get out any large lumps and clumps from this slurry because sometimes they do tend to stick around, especially in the finished product, unless you do this step. We will strain that all through, scrape off the bottom there, and then we will blend this in just until it is incorporated. We don't want to get this too thick because we will be splitting this off into three separate colors and then doing an in the pot swirl. So we don't want to cause it to set up quicker than it should. Next, we will add in our custom fragrance blend which is a blend of rose quartz, rose hip and jasmine, and also some lavender essential oil. So this is a really nice floral scent without having it smell too perfumey. It's a nice fresh floral rose scent with some depth added. So we're just gonna make sure that's incorporated. We don't want to blend that too much because we will be doing an in the pot swirl and we want to have three different distinct colors. We're going to do a light pink, a darker pink, and then a just soap batter colored, uncolored part as well. So you're going to see me splitting off here two smaller batches of soap batter which is what we will add the colors to and you'll see that here in a minute like i said this is going to be an in the pot swirl so we will be adding everything back into our original pot i am going to add in first some of our dark merlot mica which is from brambleberry this is a really nice wine deep red color with a nice shimmer to it and you'll see me blending that in here we next will add in our light pink color this is a blend of several different pinks that we have so there is some sakura some um snowflake sparkle as well we wanted it to be a nice Valentine's pink color. So we'll just blend that in with the stick blender as well till it's incorporated. We don't want to blend anything up too too much though because we don't want everything to thicken up too quickly before we actually have the opportunity to pour it into our slab mold. So after blending and mixing everything in I noticed that the colors were not what I specifically wanted so I added in a little extra pink to that darker pink tone. I wanted it to be two very distinct tones of pink and then one not pink color. Pinks are kind of hard. Um, they seem to not necessarily look like what the end result looks like when everything is cured and you'll see that here at the end. Now that everything is blended up, we're going to pour most of the batter back into that original um, mixing container. And I'm, you're going to see me doing an X here. And then I will actually do a couple quick stirs of the pot just to have everything really swirly looking. We now are ready to pour this into our slab mold. So like always we're making this in a slab mold that makes three loaves for us and you'll see me pouring frontwards to backwards to get really nice uh, swirly designs and then I'm gonna go back through and actually pour in the light pink and the darker pink 
and then also delineate it with some of that uncolored soap batter as well. And we are done with these containers so once I have the lines that I'm wanting I will just scrape every last bit of that soap batter out of the pour containers and we'll do that for both the darker pink color and then also for that base soap batter color as well. Now that all of the soap batter is in there, we will tap the soap mold on the table here to get out any soap bubbles, and then I'll take one of my chopsticks and do some very loose, swirly designs. We are going to put on top of here some rose petals and then a little bit of some uh, mica as well just to give it a nice shimmery rosy look and then we ran the chopstick around the edge as well Just to make sure it releases cleanly and nicely from the soap mold and there's not any air bubbles there on the edges And now like I said, we're just gonna add in our dried rose petals and we are doing three loaves from this slab mold so you'll see me doing three lines just like when we add any botanicals to our soap we're going to want to go a little heavy-handed on them because some of these will fall out in the unmolding process and also in the cutting process. And now I am taking a mica distributor sprayer device with the white pearl violet mica from workshop heritage this is a really pretty shimmery white mica that actually has a pinkish violet shift to it so when you get it under the direct lights it really does look very pretty and kind of pinky and pearlescent and then we will spritz the top here with just some plain old rubbing alcohol. This helps keep the soda ash down and now 24 hours later we are ready to slice with our soap splitter device and you can see here while I am splitting the loaves that some of those rose petals are falling off. Generally when we are slicing up soap any of our soaps that have um, any botanicals in the top we actually do slice them last just because there is a little fallout and uh, it's easier just to clean them up at the end than in between some of our other um, soap slices. And now it is time to slice them. So you can see here that I actually flip the soap on its side towards me and that way when we are cutting it, the wire from our soap slicer is not pulling through those rose petals and making marks while we're cutting it so you still do, still do get a little bit of that but it's not nearly as bad as if we were cutting from the top down And that is how we make our diamonds and rosé soap that'll be ready just in time for Valentine's Day. So all this will be on our online store February 1st. So definitely go and check that out or come visit us in person at any of our events. Thanks for stopping by. And if you want to see more of Rainbow Crafts, don't forget to like and subscribe.